Want to bet? Yeah. Yeah. You Where can it. I do it? You can do it at Sports Interaction. It's Canada Sportsbook. Yeah. Every hockey, football, and basketball game at your fingertips. And the World Cup is almost here. We're going to be talking about some of that throughout the month of November. So excited. You can bet pregame, live and play, or one of our many prop bets made for Canadians by Canadians. It's Sports Interaction, and it makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Why are we raising the roof? Because you need to join now and see all that sports betting has to offer. Go to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. Ontario only, 19 plus. Please raise the roof and play responsibly. This is very strange. <laughs> she scores! Take a moment to look up at the ceiling. You're about to bust through it. SDPN and PWHPA present Hockey Like you've never heard it before The Noxie and Cax Show With Liz Knox and Kara L. M. Ard. <laughs> Let's get it. Welcome Go. back to Noxie and Cax on SDPM. Today we are so lucky to be joined by someone who has fearlessly carved her way into women's hockey history. She represents her peers on the board of the PWHPA, is a two-time Olympian. You may recognize her from the cover <laughs> of Chell 23 or possibly as the record holder for most points, most assists in a single women's Olympic tournament. She needs no introduction. It's Sarah Nurse. Hi. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me, you guys. I've been waiting for this opportunity for a year. <laughs> uh, we are so, so happy to have you. And we're going to get into how difficult you are to track down like yeah. later in the episode. But just before we get to talking to Sarah, we want to announce or re-announce the All-Star Weekend in Ottawa, December 9th to 11th in partnership with Canadian Tire. So this is going to be four regular season Secret Dream Gap Tour games. So with your regular four teams. Then on the Sunday, I believe, we're going to have a skills competition. So fastest skater, accuracy shooting, stick handling, a breakaway challenge, and then a (laughs) three-on-three tournament. So like the players are going to (laughs) be run to the ground this weekend. And I can't (laughs) wait to see how well-conditioned you guys are. Oh, they will crush it for sure. And I say they, because I don't assume and I will not be part of that game, but I can't wait to watch it. Let's be honest. I mean, Cax, you give yourself not enough credit. No, I can no. see it in the accuracy <laughs> no shooting for sure. <laughs> Zero. And I like to be a big fan. I'm a big fan of my women's hockey girls and I will be there and cheer them on. You'll be with well, me. Maybe you can sit. Yeah, I was going to say, you can sit next to me. The there cool thing about our All-Star Weekend is that all the participants are going to be voted on by the PWHPA members, coaches, and staff. So, Cax, you know, you're a fan favorite. I wouldn't count no, no. yourself out. <laughs> Don't you dare vote for me, people. <laughs> We're all voting for tax. <laughs> I do not want to take part of this. I, um, Yeah, disclaimer, I don't want to be there, to be completely honest. Um, it would be lovely to be on the ice with all of them, and I do it every weekend, and that's enough. <laughs> you okay. heard it here first. We're starting the campaign to get Cax to the All-Star Game. I was not part of this show. I didn't, I didn't sign off on this. I don't want to. <laughs> Can we cut this part off? Thank you. <laughs> So let's start uh, by asking you, Sarah, if you could choose your line mates for a three on three all star game, who you got and why? And you can pick anybody, okay? Anybody in the PWHPA. Anybody, okay. So I have to give like a quick, amazing shout out to Jill Sonia, Kendall Coins Goldfield. They are my line mates, Team Adidas, and I feel like the chemistry is building. <laughs> so you want to like, watch it. out for us. So watch out yeah. for us. But if I wasn't going to pick any of my teammates, I think that I would probably pick um, Jesse Eldridge or Alex Carpenter because I've never Ooh. played with either of those two. But like, I kind of low key watch them practice. And I'm like, you guys are good. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like that. I, I don't like, like either of those lines because I would get lit like a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's your issue, but that would be freaking <laughs> awesome to watch. Honestly, yeah, the playmaking <laughs> skills to the scoring abilities on that line. Yeah, yeah. I'm all for it. it. I'm gonna pitch that to somebody. <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> Our second campaign of this episode. We're only three and a half minutes in. I love it. Um, so, of course, Sarah Nurse Nursey sixteen on your social handles, playing for Team Adidas this year. Um, and we're going along some themes here today. So Adidas slogan, impossible is nothing. 
our next hard hitting question for you. What's something you would do, like a goal or bucket list item, if you knew that you could not fail? Okay, so I always wanted to be a pop star. Like growing up, Hannah Montana was like my girl. And so I think <laughs> that if I could not fail, I would like sell out and perform Madison Square Garden. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a like a third campaign right now. We, yeah. We've got a singer. <laughs> <laughs> we got a pop artist like, coming just, up. I'm like when I say I don't want to fail, like I'm like I don't. I want to be hitting like Mariah Carey or Ariana Grande high notes. You know, like that. Ooh, would be the I like it. Yeah. I was gonna ask, like, do you be honest here? Do you have like a musical inkling? Ear? Like, or, or are we like? Are we like? like no, I think that I like, honestly think that everybody can sing. And I think like, I love to sing. Like, it's mm. so much fun. I'm not like a spooner where I'm like singing in the shower, on the ice, in the locker room. Like, that's not me. But like, <laughs> yeah, we love to sing. I'll just be in my apartment singing to my dog. <laughs> I love Romeo that. loves it. Romeo loves Romeo it. Loves he's there it. every time. So <laughs> he's, all, he's my biggest fan. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's hilarious. So if you could like pick your opener then, who would open for you? Because you're, you're the star, right? I, so I mean, well yeah i mean i'm the star um like of course probably <laughs> i like rihanna would be so cool i think okay and i don't want to put myself above rihanna you're like you're like, that big share, right now <laughs> share the same stage as rihanna i'd be like <laughs> hey i mean she's this opening is, for you so you're that yeah, big you know right? like yeah. it's like woo, this okay. is you can't fail so i, I mean fail. i yeah. i believe it i think that people would pay great money to see that i would go watch there it go. for sure that there you show. Go. perfect <laughs> um so redirecting over to hockey a little bit you grew up playing in stony creek right and then went oh sorry rupert is just hitting my my light right now <laughs> He's I'm not good. tiny like Romeo. He's he's a big unit. He's he doesn't know where he sits. Um, so you played in Stony Creek growing up. Maybe tell us a little bit about your time there and then your move to Wisconsin. Yeah, I uh, I started playing in Stony Creek when I was finishing up grade eight. So going into high school, that's when I um, made the transition over there. And the organization was just incredible. Um, I was coached by like Stacey Marnock and, and Glenn Bowles. And so like the people there were great and they really wanted to see me be the best human possible and also the best hockey player. And so I think that they really pushed me to um, push my boundaries and push my comfort zones and make sure that I was playing hockey the right way. And so I like give so much credit to Stacy who, who used to be at Stony Creek and just the fact that she was able to do that for me and push me and also provide me like a strong female role model, which is, you know, I think that a lot of young girls don't actually get um, in the coaching environment. Yeah. Right. That's why I think it's great that I look at so many of my teammates now who give back and coach teams and do skill sessions because so many young women who are playing women's hockey don't actually get to be coached by women. So yeah. um, I think that's something that I definitely took for granted back then, but um, she's somebody who made my Stony Creek career so special. That's awesome. And that's something we've heard before from anyone really that has gone through the Stony Creek program. They've mm -hmm. all said something similar and how much they loved it and stuff. And, and I think, you know, that league in general too is so good for, you know, getting you guys into an NCAA type of like view or like people or coaches to come and, and watch you play. And, and obviously programs do have a big impact on players and, and coaches from the other side coming in to come and watch games. Um, we love to go watch these, you know, teams that, that install great values to players too. Right. So I think that's something that you alluded to, but that should be like, it's a big part of you want to recruit good kids that are also great hockey players. So um, talk to us a little bit more about maybe your process then to choose Wisconsin and become a Badgers on that side. Yeah. The, I, th I know that the college recruiting process has changed so much over the yeah. last like <laughs> 10 years, like from when I was recruited, like I feel like it's the landscape has completely changed multiple times. And so when I was going through it, it was actually like, pretty overwhelming like I am like 15 16 years old trying to like 
figure out where I want to spend the next four years of my life, what I want to do, who I want to be. Um, not knowing like a ton about, uh, us colleges or anything like that, but, yeah. um, the process obviously leaning on my family was super helpful. Um, I was able to go visit a bunch of different schools and kind of get a feel for things. Um, I knew that I wanted like a big school. Like I wanted to go and sit in a classroom of like five Surprises people. me a little oh that you would want <laughs> to my nightmare. go to a big school. I don't know. It doesn't... <laughs> I just I wanted see to be a number. I wanted to be a number. I literally wanted to be like student 4,554. Like that's what I wanted. I didn't want anybody to like know my name or anything. Um, so when I went to Wisconsin, they brought me to a psychology class that had 350 people. And I was like, this sounds so good. good. <laughs> Like, great, but do so you have bigger ever, classes? Because yeah, I'd like to be more anything insignificant. Bigger, anything bigger. <laughs> um, so, no, I went to Wisconsin, and my final two were Wisconsin and Ohio State. But um, at, at the okay. end of the day, like, for me, it came down to hockey and the facilities and the resources. Like, Wisconsin, we have our own arena there. We have our own, like, locker room. Like, it's state-of-the-art, brand new when I, when I was there. So, that's kind of what pushed me over the edge. Um, but I, like... I hate Wisconsin so much. I love that place. So <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's you guys are like, this is like NHL treatment at yeah. the college level. Like, yeah. it's, like yeah. Wisconsin was like the best I've probably ever been treated as a hockey player. And like you're, you're amateurs in college, or at least you were, I guess. Um, but we were treated like professional athletes. Like it, yeah. it was pretty special and it set the bar pretty high for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Set That's the, the bar very segue. high. Yeah. Isn't that perfect just segue. so... <laughs> you come out of college and like all of us, I mean, we all had very positive college experiences and like whether you had all the bells and whistles or not, like you feel like you are taken care of, right? But before you go, let's just reiterate, like Wisconsin is also like charting <laughs> two games and like, you know, they have their own arena. The arena is packed. They sell out pretty much every weekend. Tons of Olympians and other people and treated like, you know, professional, like true, true, true professional athlete. And then you come out of there. And actually, I don't know where your question was, but you can take over here. But. No, you got, I think we're thinking the same thing. <laughs> okay. You come out of there, which is like dreamland, basically we're at what we want. And you joined the CWHL at the time, right? Yes. Toronto Furies, great program at yeah. the time. Yes. Um, and I will say that when you joined in 2017, right? 18, 17? 18. 18. 18. Okay. 18, 19. We were in our prime in terms of, the C dubs like being able to kind of pay players and then we got sticks <laughs> and Bauer was kind of there and or it, not. And we got to roll a sock tape, you know, <laughs> that was pretty sick. Yeah. We barely paid anything. No, I'm just kidding. It was like, okay. So <laughs> you joined this. So how did it feel to go from Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. I won't go too low. I'll stay in the picture to uh, C dub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was like a very, uh, rude awakening. Um, and it's funny you can be honest. Yeah, you can it was, it was a rude awakening. And actually to be completely fair, I went from Wisconsin to hockey Canada to the seat of right. job. Yes. And so like, and realistically, Wisconsin is still up here. Um, mm -hmm. bar none, like it's still up here. And I remember Erica, Howe actually, she had been prepping me for a few years. It's like, <laughs> just wait till when you get to the CWHL. And I was like, Oh, come on. Like, it's Can't be that bad. like, how bad can it be? But it was just a rude awakening. Like at Wisconsin, if we were on a road trip, uh, we left on the bus on Friday, we got on the bus and we had all of our meals, our snacks, at our seat ready to go like we didn't drive on a bus longer than four hours if the if it was four hours and five minutes we were on our charter plane right like, we're not <laughs> we're not that's flying a bit to different than other mca school i would yeah. like to, to mention that yeah, yeah let's just different. clarify yeah. this is the rolls royce of college experience yeah. here yeah <laughs> and so it, it was just like just the way that we were treated um the, the staff that we had in place the medical staff the video staff our coaches just what we were provided like um in terms of video like one practice we got back and we had ipads at our stall and they're like well this is for your team's video like this is what you guys need this is for your team's video and so came out of college did hockey canada and then came to the cwhl and like we had to find our own meals on the road before the game <laughs> and i was eating at subway <laughs> okay before we get My too far into the cw though i i am curious because like i didn't really know this in depth about wisconsin what mm -hmm. is it about the school or the culture or like 
I, I'm assuming this is how most of the athletics, athletes, like most yeah. of the sports team were, were treated. So what, yeah. what is it that sets them apart? Like wh- where does this all come from? Yeah, I think it's the value really placed on athletics um, there. Like, obviously, Wisconsin is a huge school, but in the state, like, there aren't too many sports. Like, they have the Brewers, they have the Bucks, but other than that, like, there really are. They have the Packers. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh good call. Good. <laughs> you like, got it. Of, there aren't a ton of sports in Madison. And so, really, like, you're born a Badger fan, you die a Badger fan kind of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's just this huge value placed on sports. And what really struck me about Wisconsin was how they valued women's sports. So when there was a poster on campus, it was like football, men's basketball, men's hockey, women's hockey, women's volleyball. Like we were always up there with the best of them. And basically like whatever the men's team got, our team got. Like it was completely fair. Um, And so I I just think that they did it right. And they really did set the standard. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. so I just yeah, I just wanted to get that clear and out there because like obviously Title IX is is you know a legislation in the states and mm-hmm. it's supposed to be whatever the men's side get, the women's side gets. Well, to that extent, I was just gonna say to that extent too, Wisconsin being um, a Big Ten school and like being like they generate a ton of money too. Let's yeah. just put it out there, like in yeah. in terms of the amount of students and everything. So whatever amount of like funding they have on the men's side, they do for the women's side. And that's Mm -hmm. why like, if you compare Wisconsin to St. Lawrence or Clarkson university, Mm -hmm. we have the same amount of money as the men's side, but we're not like a huge school that's getting like these TV kind of like contracts in and everything. So it it, it makes sense. And it makes me even happier that you got that much and that Mm -hmm. much more and the charting and then like, this is what, you know, we're still fighting for, but you got it at the college level as you should be getting it from a school that can afford it too. Right. So, um, title line is there, but it's there within the amount of money that you have, or you can fund as your university. I think that's a clarification to Mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and yeah. so yeah, to so where we were headed before, right? So you get this <laughs> yeah, great <C-dub. laughs> professional experience, and then you come to the CW, which you know we could spend hours talking about why it didn't have the resources and the funding that it yeah. needed to give us that experience. Mm-hmm. But my question is more: what about kind of that stark reality is something that like you've held on to? as to why being a part of the PWHPA and like leaving the game better than we found it, this whole like uh, motto that we've created, like what about your experience, your lived experience sticks with you to motivate you? Hold on one sec. I'm just going to take my slipper from my dog. (laughs) (laughs) And we probably all want to guess that the slippers are like maybe Louis Vuitton or something. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Oh God, he's a disaster. <laughs> we need to keep this in. I in really the appreciate I like you it. keeping a straight face until I was done my question. Though that's just like that's some textbook interview you right there. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, my dog no. is eating my shoe. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think that it was crazy to me because obviously, like you guys had played in the CWHL longer than I did. I like walked into that league. I played there for one year. And so I didn't really have the experiences and seeing the progression of where it came from. Yeah. And so when I walked in, having come from Wisconsin and team Canada, I was like, you guys like, we're like actually settling for this. Like, like, are we serious? Like we get nothing here. We're like the way that, not that the way that we're treated per se, but just the standard for professionalism mm-hmm. yeah. was like, on the ground like in the basement we we were kind of just like grateful versus like asking for things i think that's a big yeah Yeah. difference and and i think that and and honestly that's so prevalent in female sports and with women too is just being grateful as we talk so many times for the breadcrumbs and that's something that i really recognized um probably when i was like in my early 20s like maybe like 20 i was still in college but realizing like how valuable we are as people and as athletes as well so um and understanding that like we are worthy like we are worth something we are worth a lot actually and so when I just saw how all of my teammates and and the people that I played against the CWHL just like accepting what was going on I probably annoyed everybody because I was like you guys this is not good enough we need more we need to be pushing more like we need to be expecting more 
Um, and so I think that's just something that I came in and I really tried to do. And I really tried to like open people's eyes to certain things. Like we shouldn't be getting off a four hour plane ride, driving an hour to somewhere in Alberta to play a hockey game at nine o'clock at night and then waking up the next morning and playing again at noon. Yeah. Yeah. Like we just like, we should not be doing that. And it's funny because, and and this is like a very, um, this is me like going off script here a little bit, but this is like kind of how it is when we talk to certain players in the PHF, which Mm -hmm. is like, I was at that time content because when I played, we f- missed the day of work on Friday, flew up Friday morning, and then played Saturday, Sunday, s- Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm-hmm. and flew home on the red eye, and then mm-hmm. rushed to work from the airport on Monday morning. So I was like, yeah. "Well, Nursey, this is better than it was." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, so, I, and like, it, it, it's you have true. to mix the the cool thing I find about the PWHPA is that we're constantly getting like young faces in, newer newer voices, newer mindsets in who are thinking a little bit more like you who are like, okay, we deserve better mixed with people who have lived through like some, some darker days where it's like, yeah, you know what, looking back, I wish I could have had it differently. So it's a mix of like old and new thinking, right? For sure. And (laughs) that it it like totally, it totally comes back to just like the professionalism again. Like I remember I actually had a conversation. I, Jane was there actually, but I had a conversation with Brendan Shanahan one day and he was talking about like, what is professionalism to you guys? Like, what does that mean? And I'm just like, you know, Jason Spezza, how he had like a 15, 20 year career in the NHL and how his longevity um, is really what kept him in the game. Like, how did that happen? It happened because he had a nutritionist. It ha- happened because he had great people on his medical team. He had great trainers, physios, um, strength conditioning. Like all of those feed into the longevity of a career. And for mm-hmm. one, we're we as women, somebody turns thirty and they're like, "Oh, it's almost time to pack it in, right?" Time to like, mail it in. After yeah. The last Olympics, people were like, "I guess it's probably Hillary Knight's last time we're ever going to see her play." And I'm like, "That girl just led Team USA." <laughs> yeah. So, how are you going to look at her and say, "Ah, she's done." Yeah, she's all washed up now. So I just think that like that, all those little factors that lead into us as women having these long careers and being able to really show how good we are for 15, 20 years. Yeah, Yeah. I I couldn't agree more. And I, although we live through the, the dark days and stuff, I think we're using it as like, this will never happen again. No one will ever live through, you know, what we had. And it's not even the baseline or it's not even like anything else. It's, do we lose her? Oh, she's back. Okay, good. Sorry. It's not even like the <laughs> baseline. <laughs> Sorry. Just checking, checking her Tinder. <laughs> Stay with us. Gosh, <laughs> you booked us. Stay with us. No, I'm just <laughs> my iPad on do not disturb. <laughs> we booked you for a reason, Mercy. God. No, I'm just uh, kidding. But what I was saying was like, it's not even a baseline anymore. Like whatever we went through or like, it's an unacceptable thing anymore. And, and, mm. Not only have you brought stuff to, you know, up and to our eyes to realize that we needed to ask for more, but then we, we're looking at different sports too. And we're looking at, you know, different, the guys, the way they're treated, they don't get, they don't have to work. They don't have to worry about half the things we worry about. Right. So like, there's like the whole physical part and staying healthy and everything, but then there's the whole mental part of it all. Like I got to figure out how I'm going to pay rent. I got to have another job. I got to do this, do that. And then I got to go practice. And this is not professionalism. Like we need to have a true professional league that doesn't require that for any athletes that plays in it. Like I'm so sick of it. (laughs) And and so often it is the career, like your career outside of hockey that players feel pulls them away from hockey is like, well, like, am I going to say no to a full-time career that gives me benefits and a 40 hour work week for, you know, playing hockey a couple of times. I mean, I love playing hockey with you guys. I really do. But (laughs) like you say, like you got to pay the bills. Right. So, (laughs) exactly. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's good that we use those experiences from the CW, whether you were there for eight years or one year, just to kind of, you know, fuel that motivation to, to make things better for, ourselves but more for the next generation like they're they're truly going to be the ones to benefit from it so let's talk about the pwhpa um you're on team adidas this year but you were on team sonnet so talk about what it's like maybe training in toronto with like you guys have quite a big group in toronto training together and then 
Like I noticed the other day at practice when I was there pushing bucks <laughs> that you Adidas girls like kind of like you you gravitate towards each other on the bench. Is this a strategy oh. that happens in practice? <laughs> no, you know what? I think it because our structure is so different this year, playing with different players from different areas, I think we just try to like build chemistry as best as we can. So right. actually in Toronto, we do have a lot of team Adidas girls. Like I think we have like seven or eight of us. So um, we do try to stick together, <laughs> like intimidate everyone else. It's okay. <laughs> intimidate everyone else. But um, honestly, it's been so fun and so interesting because like I, we get to play and train with the best players in the world. Like the fact that I get to skate with Bray and Jenner, you know, every single day of the week like it's pretty cool even though she's on team sonnet and i'm not but uh, i just think that our structure this year is so cool and it's so unique and it's been a lot of fun so far so i'm excited to see how we keep going i think i think team adidas is uh is you know you don't need that much chemistry i'd like for you guys to stay a little bit uh separated no, but we have the same in uh, montreal we have seven of our uh team harveys together too so i i, I would assume each hub kind of like has that little bit of a setup and you know you you just you start chirping each other like within the the hubs of like oh yeah go team armies or it's like <laughs> i'm sure this is the same thing but it's been so good and again it, we only had one showcase right the next one is coming up um and so far it's only good you know comments in terms of like how the game is going how the teams are and everything and getting to play with different players is huge like Sarah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I was talking about it, but your line is like one of the fastest line I can, I could face. And I did. And I was like, my coach is not going to put me on D against this line. And then it ended up freaking lining up. Like I was against you guys yeah. the whole game. And like, I just, I'm, I'm always curious to see like, how is it, you know, you, you've played with Jill before, but maybe not on the line uh, with Hockey Canada, however that was, but you've never played with Kendall either, right? Like, yeah. how is Kendall Coyne too, right? It's like, it's, it's yeah. she's serious, she's a hockey player, I've known her a few, for a few years, but she's an yeah. awesome kid, and I, I just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will say, disclaimer, I'm like by far the slowest player on the team. Oh. Uh, we have Jill, we have Kendall, Laura Stacy, Kristen O'Neill. Like, That's we're a not fast team, fast. I'm like, <laughs> Come on, we've got a pretty fast team. Um, but honestly, it's been, it's been really cool. Like, I have obviously, I've gotten to know Kendall the last few years, obviously never played with her before, yeah. but just seeing like her process and what she thinks and um kind of seeing her in game like she's she's pretty serious like yeah. realistically she's a pretty serious girl and she's playing with me and jill who are the opposite of serious and so it was funny because we're on the bench in montreal and we just like started calling her kenny <laughs> i was gonna ask you about that jill was telling me about this and i'm like i hope she brings it yeah. up this is perfect we, we just like started calling her kenny and like it occurred to us halfway like it was an intermission we we're like can we call her that like we don't know <laughs> We don't know her like that. Maybe we should have asked. Say, she didn't say anything at all. And we we're like, is Kenny like Kenny yet? Uh, yeah, how do you feel about Kenny? And she's like, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> she she was okay with it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're we're trying to pull her out of her shell a little bit and because we're just a disaster on the bench. Like we just chirp everyone, each other. Um, we tell each other how beautiful we are. Like that's our process on the bench and so we're bringing Kendall right into the mix. So if you thought that <laughs> hockey players were talking about plays and setting themselves up for the next shifts you had it oh, wrong. No, not at all. No, not at all. I told I was like, Jill, your butt like really good on that skate down there. Like that's what we talked about. <laughs> and that actually reminds me because there was a great clip of you and I think Clarky at the Olympics and you guys were playing a little air piano like in between yeah. intermissions or at like commercial breaks and stuff. So like you you enjoy keeping it loose during a game. You're not like hy hyper focused, hyper serious. Yeah, that's like, that's just the way I work. And I think that every it's very individualized to everybody, yeah. right? And I, I think that's the one good thing about the coaches that I've had in the past too. They've been very receptive and like allowing of that. Mm. Like I'll talk to Troy Ryan, who's the coach of uh, Team Canada. And he's just like, I just let you do your thing. I don't even <laughs> ask questions anymore. Like, I, I don't know what's going to come out of your mouth. I don't know what you're doing. I'm just going to let you do you. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you, Troy. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it's honestly all about how you are as an individual what's gonna have you performing at your best i know that if i'm hyper focused like 
I don't even think I've ever been hyper focused in my whole life. So I can't <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really good. But you thing know to what works for you, off. right? You would probably, exactly. if you were in a setup that was the opposite, and you had to act a certain mm-hmm. way. You wouldn't probably, yeah. like, you know, be yourself or be creative within a system or within like the game that the coach is asking. Yeah. So exactly, yeah, yeah. It was funny too. I just thought of this when we were in so <laughs> at the Olympics and. I don't know if we're going to talk about this, but at, at the Olympics, actually, when Team USA scored the goal, like 12 seconds left, whatever it was, yeah. to make it 3-2, I remember I went to the face-off with Jenny and uh, Pooh, and, like, we did, like, a little huddle, and I was like, guys, we've got 12 seconds left, we're going to win a gold medal, and the way that they looked at me, <laughs> just, like, dead serious, and I was like, okay, read the room. <laughs> Ringer, what's my job on this face <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, all right. Next time, see you in 12. <laughs> oh, my Sorry, God. Too soon? What is it? No. I can see that, dude. <laughs> That's so funny. Actually, it was funny. In Montreal, like, I was down buzzing around the locker rooms, probably putting sticks on helmets and stuff. And uh, Danielle Sauvageau saw Kendall Coin walk by. And she's like, is she mad? And I was like, come on, <laughs> let's just Kendall. Like she just, just she just looks like that before games. Like yeah, she's she's just focused. Looks like that. Yeah. She's on a mission. Yeah, all times. and then yeah. she'll come give you a big hug and be like, "How are things?" Like, yeah, I'm like, no, she's yeah. just she's dialed in. So like, yeah, everyone's different, and I think especially for coaches like who are listening to this, it's important to understand that like every kid is not going to be that super yeah. like angry or super focused or super hyper. Like it, everyone yeah. kind of has their balance on that, on that spectrum. Um, so I love that. I love that you can be yourself. And speaking of being yourself uh, at the Montreal showcase, we saw some custom CCM skates for you um, for yeah. breast cancer awareness. So talk first of all, why that causes so close to your heart and then, you know, take us through the, the <laughs> artistic detail that you put into those. Yeah. Um, obviously with October being breast cancer awareness month, um, like cancer unfortunately has touched like so many people in so many different ways. And so for me, both of my grandmothers on my, um, my father's side and my mother's side have been affected by breast cancer. They're both breast cancer survivors. And so, um, those are two very important people to me that I definitely wanted to pay tribute to and, uh, with the skates and then also like kind of highlight, um, this organization called Bright Run, which is in Hamilton and they do a run walk every single year. And, and raised, I'm pretty sure they raised over half a million dollars actually this past wow. year um, for cancer research that really stays locally in Hamilton. That's we have amazing. Like an incredible healthcare system in Hamilton. And so um, they do an incredible job. So I wanted to highlight them as well with the skates. But um, honestly, working with CCM, obviously they're a PA partner this year as well, but it has been like amazing um, for the last few years for me. And I remember talking to them probably coming out of the Olympics or maybe just before the Olympics about kind of what we we're going to do next year, what we were thinking. And I was like, what about like custom skates? And they were totally down for the idea. Um, and so I got to meet with like the designer, Alain, who was amazing. And we did like the color wheels and um, exactly like what I wanted on the skates. And that, I think the coolest thing to me actually about the skates is the liner. And I know not anybody gets to really see the liner but the inside of the skate it's like a little monogram moment like my initials are in there um, there's a little bright run logo like it's pink it's very louis vuitton <laughs> it's, i it's saw them louis when vuitton. they're on the that was yeah that was the inspo i was like can we do like louis vuitton but sarah nurse um oh. and so honestly just like the little details on the skate like having my grandmother's names on the skate um uh, my signature the bright run logo um, just like different details uh, that we got to put on these breast cancer skates were all really, really special. And so the design process was so much fun. And there are definitely a few more skates to come yeah. that I'm excited Ooh, about. Um, yeah, we're going to ask. Of, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen one of the pairs that's coming out in a few months. And um, another one I'm very excited to see. Um, yes, I can't give you too many teasers, <laughs> but... They sent they sent a first draft and they didn't even show me the first like draft of the skate because they knew that it wouldn't be up to my standards. So. <laughs> it wasn't so we're gonna bright see. enough. For... It wasn't, yeah, 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 yeah. So I can't wait for everybody to see them. But yeah, oh, we we'll definitely have that. more coming. That's, <laughs> I it's love awesome. that. Mm-hmm. And like especially as hockey players, like I mean, this is no surprise in the conversation of this company, but like hockey players typically have a very hard time like expressing any sort of character or uniqueness yeah. outside of like yeah get pucks in deep and you know, <laughs> change hard and whatever so i love that ccm has like 
not only, you know, agreed to, but like is inspiring you to be yourself and to put yourself, Mm -hmm. you know, brand yourself on your equipment. And especially for players like goalies, we get to do that through our pads and our helmets, which is kind of fun. But you guys Mm kind of get like... You know, you get the short end of that stick where it's like, yeah, oh, we don't here's, get anything. Here's like, what you get. get. Anything, yeah. <laughs> if you get anything yeah. at all, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it is pretty cool. I mean, like you see, like I always think of like basketball players and like they don't necessarily wear the colors of their team on their shoes. Like they have these like outrageously cool shoes. Yeah. And I'm like, why not as hockey players? Like, do we not do that? Yeah. Right? Like I looked all kind of crazy at the Montreal showcase. I had these pink skates, a white stick. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> were go- like, like it was neon green and blue. <laughs> I was but looking all kinds listen, of everyone was asking. Everyone was like, "Oh, what are the skates for?" And it must be for yeah. something, you know. Like everyone yeah. was like curious about <laughs> it, and as they should. And then you're raising awareness through like just mm-hmm. wearing those things. Like I, I think that's yeah. beautiful. It's awesome and good for CCM mm-hmm. for stepping up. And, yes. ca- and keeping up with you, I guess, and knowing your style, right? I, know. I, definitely, I definitely put him through the ringer for sure. <laughs> and, no, and no. speaking of, like, uniqueness, we want to get into a little bit um, about kind of who you are away from the rink. So we saw Romeo. I'd love to see him again. Is that a yeah. hamburger that's on his head? Like, what is that? So, <laughs> come here, Baba. Come here. <laughs> So he just got surgery, actually, Aww. and so he wasn't really. <laughs> so He's he got a donut <laughs> thing. I love it. <laughs> he wasn't really down with the cone. Yeah. Like we weren't with big cone fans. He ended up taking it off, and so I found him with this little like inflatable ring. <laughs> And so it prevents him from like, instead his of moves. the cone head stuff. I love yeah. it. You know what? He should it's be so fashionable. Look at him. It looks like a scarf. Yeah. He looks so comfy. If he falls in a pond, <laughs> right? he'll just float there like a little marshmallow. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> so he's not going to drown. But yeah, no. He is the sweetest little guy. He's feisty though. He's just like me to be <laughs> <He's feisty. laughs> And he knows what he wants too. Probably he does. Huh? He does. Yeah, he's yeah. like, let me out of here. And hand me. <laughs> So, <laughs> obviously, you have Romeo, and you just got him last year. Is that right? This I got summer. him in the summer. This past summer. This past oh, summer, so yeah. Got- he's six months. Oh, my gosh. So, this is a yeah. brand new edition. He's a brand new edition. And how has it, it been good at home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is it going? You know what? I expected it to be hard. Like, I really did. But it is, like, so hard. <laughs> 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 but... To be fair, he is like the perfect, perfect puppy. Like this okay. dude sleeps through the night. Like he doesn't wake me up. Like he he really is the perfect little puppy. He loves me. Like I leave the room, he waits at the door for me. I'm like, finally. <laughs> Someone who is going to do that for me, but no, I'm kidding. Uh, he's so, so sweet. And he, like, loves people, loves dogs. He's just, like, afraid of weird things. So, like, I tried to take a picture of him with a little pumpkin, like a pumpkin that was this big. He wouldn't go near it. Like, was terrified. But he will see, like, a Rottweiler on the street and will run after it. Oh, yeah. And be like, I need to be your friend. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, I he's the best. <laughs> he used to come to work out and the rink with me. So, Come he's awesome. on. Okay. Does he have outfits? Like, if you take him to a rink, does he stay bundled up or? Oh, of course, I have to have a little coat for him. Yeah, oh, I, knew, oh, I knew it would be yes. Absolutely. Is, <laughs> yeah, he he a purse a dog? is he a purse, he's a purse dog? Yeah. He's a purse dog, but he doesn't like to be held down, though. He's very, like, let me be free, okay. you know? Okay. But he's sweet. He's got a little outfits. He's always styling. Sometimes we match. It's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> in the same as pigs. That's for oh, sure. Goodness. I need to have that. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love and it. then okay. outside of like, because pets are amazing. I mean, we're big dog people, obviously. I feel yeah. like we talk about dogs almost every episode, which I'm we not even to. mad about. And I'm not no. sorry. But outside of that, you know, how do you like on what? If you have free time, I don't, yeah, honestly, like, Nursey is so freaking busy. I can't even, I can't even explain to our audience, but. If you have free time, what do you do? Like, what do you do for you? Yeah, honestly, when I have like five minutes, I just like to sit on my couch and <laughs> do nothing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I yeah, love no, it. honestly, I honestly, I am such an introvert, like homebody, and people like think that I'm lying when I say that. But I get so energized when I'm just sitting at home by myself, like reading a book or doing whatever really like I just love being at my house I love my house like don't make me leave my house I love my house Um, (laughs) and I honestly just like to like sit and 
like be alone like i'll like watch a youtube like i'm a huge youtube person like i love watching youtube videos um i love reading and like journaling and stuff and so just do little things like that youtube that yeah okay, you go first say, Cass. i was gonna say youtube are we about to see a uh sarah nurse youtube channel oh, coming okay. out soon are we are we vlogging I soon i don't know if we're gonna see a sarah nurse channel no i've always like i don't watch tv i will watch youtube like i'll watch like makeup tutorials or like okay bag reviews or vlogs like i don't know like <laughs> all right bag reviews okay so yeah, you like, will sit for, for a little bag i'm like oh how do people like it yeah <laughs> i okay. lo- i'm i'm dying and i love it so much like i didn't know that about you sarah that's like yeah wow okay. you, can, you can find anything on youtube that, anything that is very true right and i yeah. feel like youtube of all the social media and that everything that you could TikTok, have maybe? yeah like, but youtube is your go-to i do do tiktok tiktok's easy but it's totally different like youtube is just like more like for me anyways like i'm like the long form more produced videos where tiktok's like just funny okay you know like okay. you have the short form funny i, video. I have right. a tiktok question for you Oof. oh gosh is there <laughs> anything that you would be embarrassed for people to know that frequently comes up on your like for you page or whatever <laughs> or like your what? your little finder glass on instagram yeah yeah like for me um, i'll put myself out there so you're not you're not the only yeah, one yeah. here for me yeah skateboarding videos oh <laughs> skateboarding <laughs> videos see i was gonna say i've been like into dunks lately so i only have shoes everywhere that comes up and like people like that so i don't have anything embarrassing right now but but just yeah, something honestly, that's like my, not really like what you would skate like i don't skate i mean i used to <laughs> not a big deal oh, but back in the day <laughs> But I thought, I, I don't know, I could watch skateboarding videos for hours. It's like, it's oh, really? ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, we're getting, we're getting, oh, she's looking, shot she's right looking now. at it right now. I'm, I'm looking right now. And to be honest, like, I don't think this is weird, but I get a lot of like wedding things pop up. Okay. And that's only weird because I am like so single. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even close. Oh, what have you been searching? But I'll get, like, <laughs> or liking and hurt, hurt. <laughs> wedding videos engagement rings mm. like Ooh. wedding dresses and i'm like like are you teasing me like what is, is this, this? An is announcement this like, of some thing? Kind? like what's happening so i do get a lot of wedding videos and like baby videos also nah. not pregnant just but not pregnant <laughs> not in a relationship yeah yeah exactly. that's just Love the algorithm okay. working it's it's magic you're like oh you're in your like mid late 20s and <laughs> you know you're into fashion and this and that and here's a beautiful wedding dress and a baby yeah and a baby hey. yeah thanks thanks instagram it. my life is not <laughs> linear um <laughs> But Jeez. you do have like, like, I can only imagine the kind of stuff that like you get because you've done some seriously freaking cool things. And Cax put together a list here. So I'm going to name oh, them and then we can like kind of n- like get into some of the ones that you want to talk yeah. about. So oh, you, gosh. of course, were, I guess you were a Barbie. A Barbie was, was. a Barbie was made this after made, you. Yeah. Yes. Of you. Yes. Of you. Yeah, like, um, that's sick. <laughs> that's yeah, that's so cool. Uh, you were it was pretty cool. <laughs> a judge on Canada's Drag Race, which I cannot even begin to tell you how f- jealous I am. Uh, <laughs> you're on a box of Cheerios, the Jane's Chicken, of course. You've worked with Revlon. You're on the cover of Elle magazine, of course. The NHL cover. You f- were featured in the film Black Ice, which was at the Toronto International Film Festival, and like the list goes on. You did the F1 party like <laughs> at, you're impossible you were at a party Film with festival. penny alexiak on the weekend i'm yeah. like I, like so how do you keep up with all of this like I all just this remember- buzz <laughs> honestly like i one i obviously feel like so fortunate that i'm able to do so many cool things and it's funny like because in the moment i'm just like oh this is what i'm doing today like this is fun this is like i get to wake up and i get to go to like a shoot for a barbie doll like this is just so fun and so like i'm so like i get to look back and be like wow i'm so grateful for that opportunity and that experience because i know that like it just doesn't come every day and if i were to tell myself that I would be doing these things like five years ago, 10 years ago, when I was like a small child, I would be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Big dreams. Um, it's okay. Yeah, right. And so it, 
all of those things are really cool. Like I've, I've been fortunate, like being on Canada's drag race, like I've watched drag race for years and years and years. Right. And Talk I know, to us about now, that. Yeah. How know? was it? Like, I want to know <laughs> more. Have, like, it was when they emailed me about that, I was like, say yes yesterday. Like <laughs> tell me when and where I will be there. And so like the process was just like getting my outfit. I did hair and makeup for like three hours because he was like, this is drag race. Like you can do whatever you want. Like if you want to have an eyeshadow look that goes all the way up to your eyebrow, hundred percent, that's yours. Like you can have it. And so that process was just so cool because the drag queens are like, the most incredible people yeah. ever they're so talented they're so good at what they do in their craft um but getting to meet like brooklyn heights yeah. and brad Goreski and tracy melshore like <laughs> just getting to meet people like that who i've like watched on tv and actually rupaul and drag race play in my house at all times like when i'm out romeo's watching drag race. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting caught up <laughs> yeah. he's watching drag race and i actually like just walked in and it was like the opening credits and they were like Brooklyn Heights, Brad Gareski, Tracy Melshore and special guest judge Sarah Nurse and I was like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. god <laughs> <laughs> I was like what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of funny like just it's something that I constantly have playing in my house like I am in like RuPaul said my name and I'm like that is so that cool that is so um, cool but yeah it was such a fun process to be a part of and I was like Drag race, if you ever need your girl, call me. I will be back. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Like, you know, yeah. you, you're super excited about it. And I'm like, wow, if this would happen to me, I don't know how the heck I would even <laughs> think of like being comfortable doing this or whatever. Like, I just love how much you love fashion and everything. And like, you know, like you're, I, I don't know. I think it's so cool. Yeah. Like you just embraced everything and go all in. Like, I think yeah. that's something people need to grasp out of this episode too. Like, yeah, do whatever. Yeah, I you think want. that's like been my biggest thing when I've been playing hockey, like my whole entire life is I've never like actually felt like, like the typical hockey player. Like when I was younger, I remember I left the rink one day in like a dress with my hockey stick slung over my shoulder. And I was still playing with the boys at the time. So there were some unhappy parents, like unhappy people in that rink. <laughs> Whatever. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck em. As you, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just like always loved doing other things. I've always loved like my game day walk-in fits. Like those have always been like super yeah. important, special because I was like, Oh, that's some time that I get to show like, my personality, individuality, right? And so, yeah, those are just like really cool moments that I've gotten to be a part of that have been a lot of fun. And honestly, I go into a lot of things in like a constant state of being terrified. So like I went into drag race. Like, okay. I was <laughs> terrified. Well, and I don't, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth here, but like, I think a big testament to your parents and your family for that, right? Like, especially in your formative years that you were like confident and encouraged to be yeah. yourself and wear that dress. And like we've said on previous episodes, like female hockey players, we come in all different packages, like, you know, and I think that that's part of our culture that's really unique in the hockey world is like, yeah. we are a very accepting, inclusive environment that you can be yourself. So if you want to like rock a dress, you go for it. You want to rock a <laughs> mullet, I'm right behind you. Like this is... <laughs> This is how we are, right? And so it's so true. Like women's hockey, there's something for everybody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah. it's how we rock. It. I yeah. love and, like even just a little not rule, but concept of like the fits for game days. Like you're saying, it was like yeah. show your personality, like yeah. dress as you wish, and then show it mm -hmm. off. It's not like okay, you got to wear the dress clothes and fit that one mold. No, I think we're yeah. slowly getting out of that, or at least. Mm -hmm our game or our sport is, you know, the men's side is a bit different, but I don't know. Yeah, I just think a little that. longer. <laughs> <laughs> they got like CBA. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple other details for them. Yeah, but whatever. Find details over there that they got to work through. <laughs> and like kind of on the same lines, right? Cause we're talking about all these really cool opportunities that you have as a female professional athlete. That is like, this is a new ground, I think, in women's hockey. So maybe talk to us a little bit or give us some insight what you can about kind of how working with your agent goes and how those conversations happen. And, and then on the flip side, like, like I'm a yes man. So I say yes to everything. Like you want me to come to your kid's birthday party? I'm there. But <laughs> how do you negotiate and how, or how do you find out like, yes, this is me or no, this isn't really me? Yeah, I think um, something that like, I will tell anybody like I have such an amazing team around me, like not only like my family, my parents, but obviously having my agent, my manager and um, something that 
I really recognize is it's okay to like ask for help. Like I am not an expert in contracts. I'm not an expert in negotiating. I'm right. not an expert in PR. Like there are so many people that I'm able to outsource who help me. And I think that's been really helpful because once I really grasp this concept of like my value as a professional athlete, as a women's professional athlete, um, it really like took off from there. And once you surround yourself with like-minded people who also recognize your value right. and are willing to negotiate your value on your behalf yeah. um, is, is very helpful. And I think has really been like a game changer for me. So again, like my support system, like my, my agents, they're absolutely incredible. They know what they're doing. Um, and, and it's all about like relationship building. Hmm. Um, I love when I f- thank God that COVID's over now. Um, <laughs> that we're kind of out of the thick of it, but getting to meet people face to face. Like there have been so many people that I've talked to for the last three years over Zoom and being able to get to meet them face to face and build that relationship and actually get to chat with them. Um, so many opportunities have just come from simple conversations that right. I've had. And it's crazy, like butterfly effects, like with one little conversation, like, can change the trajectory of what you're going to do. And so I definitely think that um, as we continue to go through our process with the PWHPA and um, as we start recognizing our own value and our own worth, like more of the women will start working with these different agents and and different brands because like women's sports is huge and really like women's sports are going to be the big ticket items and sorry to all the men out there, but that's just like the reality. That's what's going to be happening. And I'm just so excited for like all of my teammates to have these incredible opportunities. And I know for me, like with different brands or organizations, like it really does have to align with me. Like I won't say yes to everything because like if something doesn't feel right and it doesn't align with me, it's not going to be a good partnership. And that's like the biggest thing. Like I think at the beginning, I was just like, as you said, Nox, like, yes, yes, yes. I'll do everything. Like, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to be? But that made me exhausted because I was doing things. I was putting on a face, um, speaking on behalf of brands or on behalf of people that like, I didn't actually believe in. Right. And so it changes the game when you're able to work with organizations that you genuinely believe in and they genuinely believe in you. And I think that's, what's been so helpful is like, I'm not drained and exhausted by doing all these things because I actually want to. And I've been like a huge believer of like, your gut's going to tell you whether it's right or not. And if it's like, if it's a no, it's a no for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> it's a no for me. Being okay with saying no, like, yeah, you because know. I'm a firm believer that, like, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be for you. Yeah, but right. what is meant to be for you will ultimately find you. Like, I am so fortunate. I get to work with Chevrolet, for example. They've been an amazing partner the last few years to me. But I actually went through... Um, and again, like, I'm so fortunate. I'm so grateful, but I actually went through a couple of different things and a couple of different steps with a couple of different brands to get to the place where I was at with Chevrolet because certain partnerships just didn't feel right. And it was like, you know what, I'm going to pass on this one just because it it doesn't feel right. And so when we landed with Chevrolet, I was like, this is the partnership that makes the most sense for me. This is what I'm excited about. This is what it's invigorating. And like, if you pass things by, it's, it's because there's something better out there for you. I like that. I like that a lot. Cause we, we tend women being like, Oh, I have to say yes. So that, yeah. you know, wait, one, I have to say yes to everyone so that I get some kind of like partnerships here and there, but yes. Mm-hmm. So that I'm also seen as like, well, it, it's almost like it's the whole concept of like, if you say no, will they hate me? Will the brand yeah. affect? Will, will there be a, it, we do that in life in general, always, or yes. like, Hey, can you do this for me? I wish I could say no, but like, (laughs) you know, like it's, it's like we're the yes people type of, uh, you know, I guess athletes at times. So it's huge. You know what you just said? It's like, say no, because you should trust whatever, like your gut is telling you and something better will come and, and don't feel bad for it. You know, yeah, we. I think that's the biggest thing. As athletes too, or like as female athletes, we generally have this fear that if we say no, nothing else will come along. Right. So it's yeah, like that's the old ways, I think. If I think it doesn't see it, bring in new ways too. <laughs> it's true though. But this is this has been like and and Cax and I talked about it on our first episode this season, but like this summer was so huge for the PWHPA and the, our partnerships because the conversations we were having was like they not only value us, they value us more than we potentially saw them valuing us, which yeah. is like 
like they came out to us and we're like, yeah, yeah, that's great. We'll do it. And they're like, whoa, we're not done yet. We're not done talking yet. We're going to keep, we're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. And we're like, oh, okay. So then, yeah, your sense of like what you're deserving of is like, you move the bar a little bit and then it's, you know, you kind of, it's a little bit easier to say no to some directions because you're just like, I'm not sure that's, that's who we are, uh, you know, as an individual or as a, as an organization in our identity. So, um, I mean, I think, you know, we're so lucky to have somebody like you to lean on because you yeah. really are, I said at the beginning of the episode, but like you're carving a path in women's hockey history, um, you know, not just for us, but for young girls that look up to you and young boys who look up to you. Like, I mean, this is, this is part of like building your identity as an athlete and like, you're just leading the way right here, you know, hand by hand, <laughs> hand in hand with us. So we're so excited for you. <laughs> and we know that there's just like more things to come um, from Sarah Nurse, but yeah, we did want to wrap up. We're going to finish off with our, <laughs> we our, could have gone for two hours. There's so yeah. much more to say. <laughs> we should be part back. Two. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if we can track Sarah down again, we will have One her back time. on this season. We'll have a part two. Yes. <laughs> I'm into that. <laughs> so we want to know before we go, if you you could choose your dream city to have a professional women's hockey team out of where would it be and why okay i think it would be super fun to i think i would go like one of two places i think that i would either go like seattle or i would go like california-ish like san okay. diego Ooh, you're going yes. west you're going Something west cool. because you know what like it we need to bring hockey to new markets like mm-hmm. hockey is so Here's the business lady in coming in. the northeast like <laughs> we've got to break into new markets and i've just seen so many and i think that because there are so many different ways of thinking out there like i just yes. watched the game um, the other night with Anaheim and they had their night to um, honor like the Spanish influence, I believe. Yeah. And it's just so cool to see like the art and the history and the culture and the way that they're integrating that into hockey. And yeah. so I just think that out West right now, Southwest, I, I just think that they're doing some pretty cool things in the hockey space. And I think that we could even add to that. I love that. Yeah. I would love a team over there. If, yeah. Hey, I'd be there. <laughs> I wouldn't say no to some warm weather you either, you know. Sarah Nurse would be <laughs> down with whoever gets a team in Seattle. I believe she's in Oregon. <laughs> Oregon. Just saying. You got a franchise player in Sarah Nurse. Franchise well, player already. <laughs> Nursey, we want to thank you again so much for coming on. We know that your time is valuable. Uh, taking an hour of your day for us means the world to us. And like we said, if yes. we can get you back on here before the end of season two, we would be we would love to have you. So thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, send me a calendar invite. <laughs> I know how to do that now. Yeah, nice you finally learn how to do that. So now we should be able to to lock people in, I guess, exactly. which is what happened. <laughs> calendar invites coming into your DMs. All right, we did want to wrap up. We're going to be in Turo. Actually, if you're yes, hearing we this, can. we're in Turo right now. It's a time travel, uh, November 4th to 6th this weekend, Turo, Nova Scotia, catch the Secret Dream Gap Tour. And then we're in Pittsburgh, November 26th to 27th, clinics on the 25th. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, All-Star Weekend, Ottawa, December 9th to 11th. Schedules, tickets, everything you need to know is at pwhpa.com. And of course, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and follow Sarah Nurse because she's the it girl. Thanks so much for coming, girl. Catch the games on CBC as well, too, guys. The jam. Let's go. Watch us. You got it. And Sarah, you should, Sally, wave at the camera or something this weekend. I see a goal or two, I think. I think it's going to (laughs) happen. Blow them a kiss. There you go. They'll love it. We'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one. The Noxie and Cax Show on SDPN. Produced in partnership with the PWHPA. Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMR. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out SDPN.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. She scores!